So a couple of days ago, we talked about polygons, what it meant to be a polygon, different things about polygons. Last time we talked about parallelograms. Today it's specifically special parallelogram. We're going to prove and apply properties of rectangles, squares, and rhombuses. And we're going to use those properties to solve problems. Most of us are familiar with rectangles and squares. If you don't know what a rhombus is, we'll talk about that here in a second. Just a little back, a little background. Remember, a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Snuck that in there so we remember what that is. And so all the rectangle is is a quadrilateral with four right angles. That's the definition of a rectangle. It's quadrilateral with four right angles. I'm going to ask you to draw an appropriate picture, appropriate markings. There's my beautiful artwork right there. Next one says rhombus. What is a rhombus? A rhombus again is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. As long as I have four sides and they're all the same, by definition, that's a rhombus. There's my artwork. The tick marks telling you all the sides are the same. A square is a quadrilateral with four right angles and four congruent sides. So it must have four right angles and all my sides must be the same. And there's my picture. Okay. Before we get into the down below stuff, I remind what again reminder what is a polygon? It is a closed figure made from three or more segments. I call this a Venn diagram. We've got it so it sort of nests out the big word, the big thing that all of these are are quadrilaterals. Everything that we are talking about is a quadrilateral, and all a quadrilateral is it's a polygon with four sides. Okay, within quadrilaterals, we have parallelograms. What is a parallelogram? We've talked about that. It is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, within parallelograms, now we're discussing these three new things. We're discussing rectangles, we're discussing squares, and we're discussing rhombuses. Specifically, what is true about rectangles? Cover this up for now. Make sure we are on the screen. Rectangles. Again, it's a parallelogram with four right angles. The key, other key thing to remember is that my diagonals are congruent. If I draw in my diagonals on a rectangle, they are congruent. Okay, if you need to pause, pause. All right, parorhombus. It's true about a rhombus. Again, it's a parallelogram with four congruent sides. We've talked about that. Okay, bullets that we need to remember. My diagonals are perpendicular. If I have a rhombus, my diagonals are perpendicular. And my diagonals bisect the angles that they connect. Basically, it means that they bisect the angles. By drawing my diagonals, my angles are bisected. If you need to pause, pause. And the big one, the square. Everything that we just said that is true about rectangles, squares, and rhombuses, it is all true about squares. Squares have four right angles and four congruent sides. All properties are true from a rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, and quadrilateral. Anything that we know to be true about a rectangle, a rhombus, a parallelogram, and a quadrilateral is true about a square. Again, if you need to pause, pause. I'm trying to keep these videos short. First question, my usual advice, think about it on your own first. Let me, there we go. Is a square a rectangle? By definition, the answer is yes. The next one says, is a rectangle always a parallelogram? Think about it for yourself. Hopefully you see that the answer is yes. Number three, is a rectangle always a rhombus? Think about it. The answer is no, it's not. Number four, is a quadrilateral always a parallelogram? Is a quadrilateral always a parallelogram? No. And I drew a little picture. That is a quadrilateral. It's definitely not a parallelogram. Number five, what would you have to change in a rhombus to make it a square? Think about it. All four angles would have to be 90 degrees. A rhombus has all my sides the same, but all my angles are not necessarily 90 degrees. If I had a rhombus, if, so if I had all my sides the same and I knew all my angles of 90 degrees, I would have a square. What would you have to change in a rectangle to make it a square? I would need all my sides to be the same. 
This next one I'm just going to show you the answers. It's too hard to conceal. And let's explain where they're coming from. Let me slide so it all fits. Slide so it all fits. Okay, I have a square. Remember, if I have a square, all my properties about rectangle square uh, rhombuses are true. Rhombuses, my diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So with the square, my diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So I've made a little box. Those are perpendicular. So V, which is right there, measure angle B must be 90 degrees. W, remember, so this is a square, which means this whole angle over here is a right angle. Remember, my, my diagonals bisect these angles. So each of these must be 45. So W has to be 45 degrees. X, again, same thing. My diagonals bisect a rhombus. A square is a rhombus. So my diagonals bisect these angles. So X is also 45. For the same reason, Y is also 45. For the same reason, Z is also 45. And then trying to get A. How do we get A? Tells me right here my perimeter is 82. If this side is 6A minus 2, then I should be able to do four of those. 4, 6A minus 2 has to be equal to 82. That's how I find the perimeter of a uh, square. Work it on down. Follow me. If you have questions with this, ask me in class. And so A must be equal to 3.75. Yeah. Let me cover what I still need to cover and uncover what I need to uncover. There we go. Alright, so I've got my stuff plugged in. This is a rectangle. Again, I know my corners are all 90 degree angles. So if that's 54, this has to be 36. I have symmetry going on here. If this is 54 and that's 36, that's got to be 54 and that's 36, 36, 54, 54, 36. There is symmetry in these triangles being drawn. So then, N, N is right here. If this is 36 and this is 36, if I know two angles of a triangle, I can always get the third. 36 plus 36 is 72. 180 minus 72 is 108. So N's got to be 108. X, where is X? These two must be equal to each other. So I have 4X plus 3 equals 2X plus 13. That gives me X equals 5. A, B. Once I know that X is 5, I can just plug that in and I'll get A, B is 23. Therefore, B, C is 14. I can get the perimeter by adding up all the sides and I'll get 74. All right, let's see if I can get this one all to fit on the screen. That looks pretty good good. Tells me I have a rhombus. So again, I know that my diagonals are perpendicular. So it asks me for the measure of angle XZT, XZT, which is that angle, which must be 90 degrees. Asks me for A. And A, how did I go about getting A? Yeah, right here. 14A plus 20. This must be a right angle right here because again it's still at where my diagonals intersect. So 14A plus 20 must be equal to 90. Working on down you get A is equal to 5. XTZ XTZ. It tells you it's 5A minus 5 but we just figured out that A was 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. 25 minus 5 is 20. B how do we get B? I know that these two sides have to be the same. So I can do 3B plus 4 equals 13B minus 9. This side has to be equal to this side. And I'll get B equals to 1.3. So then XT, putting in 1.3 for 3, XT must be 7.9. Add up all my sides. My perimeter is 31.6.